believe it's to Easter weekend, long weekend. We go on a little early. Stevie P special appearance. Franco is here. Buona Pasqua fatta. Buona pa- what is Pasquetta today in uh, in Italy? Pasquetta. Uh, Pasquetta today. <clears throat> Serie A games. And if you are tuning in, we're going to leave everybody some time. What are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about uh, Milan Fiorentina. We're going to talk about Serie A. We're going to talk about uh, the 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 the, uh, the um the shit show that was Yankee Stadium. Let's go. <laughs> the shit show that was Yankee Stadium exactly and uh, on that note the guys if you ever we get on here early uh, coast to coast when they go on is there a pregame shot uh, Stevie P what do, what did they need to do? Subscribe. Subscribe guys. It's very important. Uh you catch all the notifications, so you hit the thumb, you hit the subscribe, and you hit the little bell, and we notify you. Yes, we notify you when we're going on. And uh, welcome to newest member on Patreon from uh, from Australia, Mark. Thank you for uh, joining. Frank, tu sei pronto? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm How many pages good. of notes do you have for today? Six. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> on that note. Let's get the show on the road. Welcome to the Milan Weekly Podcast, the English voice of Milan fans all over the world, with your hosts, Vinny T and Stevie P. Benvenuti nella casa Leao carica il boccino! Eccolo qua! Rafa Leao! Cari amici sportivi, welcome to another edition of the Milan Weekly Podcast, where we talk everything Milan, a purely to the rescue Milan, a, a Yankee Stadium swing and a miss. Milan, uh, Stevie P here. Uh, we have a Franco direttamente Notizie dell'America, special correspondent <laughs> uh, via New York. Uh, welcome, Franco. Uh, always nice to see you. We did see each other live in person a couple of weeks ago, even though it was hard to uh, to 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 get to each other. The, the phones in that stadium, I don't know what's going on, but uh, it was very nice. Um, even with the $20 US beers in that stadium, it was still a, a good time. Uh, Stevie P? Been a while. Uh, welcome back. Welcome back. And uh, yeah, with our friend it took, here. Uh, it took Milan to piss me off real nice and good to get me back on. But uh, nice to be back. I know uh, Franco Cobaracic was on, so I wanted to get back on to uh, support him in this uh, fantastic <coughs> monologue that we're going to give him in a couple of seconds to talk to us about uh, what happened with his experience. But uh, yeah, a lot going on. Got to see uh, Italy play live in New York. And, uh, yeah, and uh, three points at Milan. So let's talk Milan. Let's go. Um, before we get into the Milan stuff, I uh, wanted to get this out of the way. Uh, you know, it's been a hell of a week for you, Franco, even maybe more than a week for yourself, for your colleagues at the Milan Club uh, New York, uh, for anybody that has been living under a rock. Um, you know, this whole fiasco, the pregame, uh, pre-sale for the game, Manchester City, Milan. Um, you wrote a long thread uh, explaining what you went through. I know you've spoken to some people, but this was the time to not only, you know, we love having you on, it was for you to really say in your words, because sometimes some stuff gets lost in translation over uh, writing it. And thank you to uh, uh, Sunny to making this uh, swing and a miss, because it was definitely a swing and a miss from... Was it Milan? Was it Yankee Stadium? Uh, Franco, the floor is yours, man. So please uh, explain to us and to because a lot of Milan fans, whether it be you know we like to call each other the five families here, would it be New York, Philly, uh, Boston, uh, yourself, and 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 Toronto? But um, this is not just for Milan cl- Milan fan Milan club in New York, but all of these surrounding boroughs. So take us through what 
what happened, man? <laughs> yeah. So, well, first of all, Buena Pascua. Uh, happy Buena Easter Pascua. to anybody who celebrated. Uh, good to be with you guys again. It was nice to see you a couple weeks ago. It was nice uh, to meet Stevie P's son, who's sitting there giggling at my New York accent. It was like the, it was like the highlight of my day. It was hysterical. Yeah. Um, just, uh, you know, a lot has happened over the last week. And uh, some people have seen the thread on, on mm -hmm. Twitter. I tried to do my best, like you said. Uh, sometimes things get lost in translation. Sometimes people interpret things differently. You know, you're you're very limited as to what you can write in one tweet. I'm surprised I didn't go to Twitter jail for posting so many tweets in succession, but it, it worked out. Um, <clears throat> what happened? Uh, on March 19th, the Soccer Champions Tour announced that Milan would be playing uh, three games in North America, one in New York against Manchester City, and the others in... Uh, Chicago and Baltimore. So uh, what happened was we woke up that morning and we realized that Milan was playing in New York. We had no prior notification, uh, which was stressful. You know, the stress started right from there. I woke up with everybody else um, and I found that at the same time as everybody else, which isn't isn't pleasant. You know, if you're trying to organize fans for, for a nice event like this, you, you probably want to know ahead of time. And you can give your members the information that they need. So what happened? I spent the next week trying to gather as much information as I could. Uh, me and my um, committee. And we didn't get much information over the next week. And we found out that Soccer Champions Tour had a link on their page to sign up for a Tuesday morning pre-sale. And then we come to find out on Friday afternoon that there's a pre-sale pre-sale on Monday morning uh, exclusive. And um, our question to them was, okay, do you have any other information? Nobody at Soccer Champions Tour ever answered my email. Uh, it was an email of nine questions, six of which had to do with the pre-sale specifically, and then three just had to do with the game in general. Um, the weekend came and went. We got an email from Milan on Saturday evening. Uh, which was Saturday evening before the pre-sale, so not this past Saturday, but the one before, whatever the date was, March 22nd, 23rd, 24th, whatever day that was. And in the email, it said, here are exclusive links for the Chicago and Baltimore pre-sales. Please spread them around to your members. We do not have one for New York yet. We will get it to you soon. When you get an email from Italy on a Saturday night, you know that you're not getting another email until Monday morning. So what happened? We went to the Italy game on Sunday. I got home very late because the traffic was insane. Uh, by the time I got settled, by the time I got my stuff together, by the time I wound down, it was midnight. I set my alarm for 4 a.m. on the Monday morning of the pre-sale to send an email to Milan to say, I am awake. There are people anxiously waiting for this link on the other side of the ocean. Please get it to us when you can. They responded within 15 minutes and they said, we don't have anything yet. We'll, we'll get it to you. They didn't say, in the meantime, if we don't get it to you by 9 a.m., don't do anything. There are seats waiting for you, whatever. They just said, we don't have anything and nothing else. So what happens? Six o'clock, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, 8.57. Now all my members are like, what are we doing? Are we buying tickets? Are we waiting? What are we going to do? So one of my members miraculously found a pre-sale code that was given to Yankee season ticket holders. And we said, let's go. Let's let's get that section behind the goal. I sent an email out. I had a draft ready to go. I sent an email out to the 98 people that are on our um, you know, email list, giving them the information that they needed. And we said, go back there. The pre-sale itself was a disaster by the time we got in. We got in, there were 6,000 people in the queue. Who were all these other people? It was probably half of them were probably resellers. Most people got their tickets where we wanted them to. Some people didn't. And what happened? They went to the sections behind. They went to other sections adjacent, you know, down the, down the row, whatever it might be. One to two hours later, the, the same tickets... The same section, all of a sudden, there were more tickets in the section where people weren't able to get tickets before. The price went up 10 to 15% in an hour on Ticketmaster.com. Um, 
and we're getting a ton of messages already by by the time it's 11 a.m on the day of the first pre-sale on monday what happened what's going on here what is what's with this ticket price why did it go up how come this guy got this i i only got three in the section that i wanted i wanted four i went back in and bought a single like down the row in the same row from me and i paid more for the one ticket than i did you know for one ticket with the other three so even myself i i realized and this you're doing all this and i know what kind of guy you are so this you know so i'm the quote and you're not a kind of guy that could answer guys this is out of my hands i'm not getting information you're just trying to please everybody and it's kind of embarrassing not for milan club new york but embarrassing to go guys i, I don't have that information and you're trying your best not just yourself and the, the rest of your committee that's that's the biggest takeaway from this is that it's extremely embarrassing like we pride ourselves on being such an organized group i'm just an organized person i do things i mean you know it you yeah. guys know it when i come on the show with you i ask you a million questions before we come come on what are we talking about today what should i have prepared are we going to talk about seria and you're probably like calm down with and you know you guys joke with my six pages of notes but that's just the type of person i am and when i don't get a chance to um you know, convey that information the way I would like to, it's it's extremely stressful um, and it's embarrassing because we pride ourselves on being, you know, a, a very organized and, and large group. And we, we like to put on um, a certain image and, you know, that that tarnishes the image. So yeah. um, the I long... want to add something, I want to add yeah. something because it's very important. And I know I'm going to say it because <laughs> I don't want you to say it. I'm going to say it. Not only is this whole situation absolutely ridiculously dumb and stupid, uh, this is the problem that we have across the pond. So they sit and there are many pants and there are many shoes, and they forget that there's guys like you, there's guys like Presidente, there's guys like Mark, there's guys like the Fanti, there's guys like Maurizio, that we put a lot of time a lot of time into these supporter groups that are not very easily run no. yeah. because people are a creature of habit. They're also a creature of, uh, you know, ease of, of watching a game. You know, the, everything is handheld. It's hard to get people out to the bar. You know, people keep on telling us, how come you don't take pictures at Chicharros? It's hard to get people out. And the people that do come out and the people that sign up for your lists are people that are expecting a service. Mm -hmm. And that service from you is information. Yep. And, and that's what Milan doesn't understand. And, and it's not only Milan, Cheech. It's Serie A. And I had, I had the wonderful opportunity to go on Serie A, sit down with Frank and Richard on their 300 episode. And I said something, and I hope that if I get hit by a bus tomorrow, you guys continue. I wish Serie A would love itself as much as we love Serie A. <laughs> you know, Steve. I honestly truly do, guys. And it's very frustrating, right? It's very frustrating for guys like you, uh, uh, you know, guys like us who are both in clubs, uh, guys like us who try to do content for Milan and Serie A. It's just, it's constant. It's, uh, it's neglect. It's yeah. neglect. It's, it's neglect, especially, Steve, when you hear stories how... Man City had everything organized, had reached out to their fan clubs across the pond. Uh, you know, I don't know how the other teams uh, went about it. And, you know, you said it, Steve, the service of information. And you have guys like like the, everybody that you just named, whether it be, you know, the behind the scenes working. And this is, you know, we're not getting I mean, paid for this kind of I, stuff. And I get know. it. I get that. I get that. I get that. But it can't be on, on Frank. It can't be on Milan Club New York all the time. No, because but some Milan people Club are taking York, it on him. No, 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 no. Hopefully the not. That are take, the people that are taking it out on Milan Club New York, it's because they don't understand. They don't understand where the root cause problem is. I think that was that was the point of the thread yeah. on Twitter, because it's very hard to answer an individual email without it looking like I'm passing the buck myself. Absolutely. Uh, or coming up with an excuse. So when. When we got the full story out there, at least I started to feel a little better. And then the next day, the organizers contacted us. Yeah, but imagine, that cannot be on you. Like, this is what they need to understand. This is not a business. Yeah. 
Milan Club New York, Milan Club Montreal, Milan Club Boston, Milan Club Toronto, Milan Club Chicago. I don't even want to miss one. They're not goddamn businesses. SoCal. SoCal. <laughs> the city I need to understand. And it's not only for Milan. It's for Juve and their disgusting fan groups with their stupid team. It's the Inter, the Snakes and all that stuff. It's the Laziali. Guys, there's a lot of people that put in a lot of time. And these guys, these dinosaurs at Serie A, are, are not, not doing the right thing, guys. And, you know, it's it's a long time. And I, I, I told you guys, I wanted to come on because I was really mad. I'm really mad. Because it's not, and again, it's not because it's New York. But let's face it, guys. New York is the biggest. You screwed up on your biggest supporting group across the ocean, whether you like it or not. You cannot do that. You've already botched multiple things on this side of the ocean. But what is it now? You know. So I started to think a bit. And we talked about it on the way home, uh, myself, Vince, and everybody else. Was this a dollar thing? And that's what I want to understand, right? Was this just we missed the information or we want to sell tickets at the highest possible price, right? I, I would, I mean, just my my educated guess. Again, I ju I'm just asking because right. now we saw we saw what we saw what the national team did in in in, in New York at Red Bull Arena, right? It, it created a lot of buzz. I think. You know, and I was there, and I'm probably going to be biased. I think it was very successful. Uh, Ecuadorian fans, Italian fans, Harmony, tickets weren't cheap. People still bought them, right? Now we see what's happening in Copa America, right? Impossible to follow Argentina, impossible yeah. to follow Brazil. Guys, the next one is the big one. So let's let's skip past Milan and Manchester City in 2026, guys. What are we going to be paying for World Cup tickets? Twenty thousand a ticket. My my friend, one of my good friends, is an Argentina fan. Um, he, like I, I said, the Copa America is a good gauge for what is going to happen in the World Cup because at MetLife Stadium, I forget which group stage game it is, Argentina, whoever, in the third level, he paid like three hundred fifty dollars each for Copa US. America. US. So just yeah, US. So just wait, just wait for the World Cup. Forget it. And I think that's the thing. I, I think one one of the things that I would like to say eventually when I when I make this you know last call uh, with Milan is is that you treated this friendly like the players do, where they're running at forty percent. It's the middle of July. It's not important. You know, it just is what it is. Let the, the organizers do what they got to do. We'll just sell tickets. We'll make some money for participating in the in the summer uh, tour. Whereas, you know, Milan had a obligation to its fans and, and they dropped the ball on this one. As much as the, the organizers want to take the blame, and they really did, like they took the fall like completely. I, I wanted to ask you about that, Franco, T taking it back to that. So... I saw that you had a response on Twitter to the organizers, and I believe you were able to exchange with them and mm -hmm. saying that they took the blame. And I wanted to get also, you know, for your future, because I believe you are going to be talking to some other people directly at Milan. Right. And what is your... Because <clears throat> I think, uh, as in Seinfeld, you can sack your sorries in a sack, mister. You're not looking for sorries. Is that what are you looking for? What are you trying to... Your objective from these discussions. So take us through... Uh, the organizers, how they reacted to you, and uh, what you're looking forward. Yeah, I mean, so we got on a phone, we got on a Zoom call with with the organizers the next day um, after the thread came out, and the, the the CCO of Florida Citrus Sports, which is the parent company of Soccer Champions Tour, she hopped on the call, and she took full responsibility for what happened. Um, and I walked her through everything that I just mentioned here. And I explained to her why the fallout of that is so detrimental. And I explained to her, you know, now you're going to have a lack of atmosphere. You could have had a better atmosphere than before. Um, you know, you have the American, average American soccer fan that would have come to this game to see Manchester City. And the 12-year-old kid who thought he was coming to see Manchester City would have looked over at the Milan fans and would have said, holy crap, look at them. 
And then maybe he would have started following Milan. Or maybe next summer when both teams come back, he's going to want to see both teams and not just the one team. You know, they they like to um, put up the excuse that, you know, it's a marketing thing and this and that. And we have algorithms and data that tell us when to do this and that. There, there was so much that went wrong. Um, but w- the only thing that I wanted to find out on that call was what happened. Right. So there was a lot of what happened, unfortunately. So Yankee Stadium is a very difficult venue to deal with. So I, I think Sonny hit it out of the park today with the graphic. Uh-huh. Um, so it, it really, Yankee Stadium is a tough place to deal with. So part of it is Yankee Stadium's fault. Um, they didn't have the link in time because they didn't have the seating arrangements in time. So my question to the organizers was like, why the hell are you putting the game on sale then? If hmm. things aren't ready until that morning. Why are you putting stuff on sale? And oh, it's because you know the marketing team says that if we announce the tour this date, then the tickets have to go on sale this date. It creates a buzz and this and that. I said, Well, now you ruined it. I said, Now you ruined it because I said, This isn't just about the fair weather American soccer fan who's coming to see a friendly with an overpriced ticket. I said, There are real fans here that would have created a much more authentic atmosphere for your product that you ignored. And I said, now you're offering people to refund the tickets where they got them to move to a worse section. I said, now not everybody's going to do it. So it's not like we're all going to pick up and move to the section and give you the the atmosphere that we said we would have given you. Because I'm not going to trade my seventh row ticket to go to the second section back in row 20. With reason. And I said, so now you lose out on that atmosphere. And she, she, to, to give her credit, she, she took full responsibility. You could tell she was like mortified. You could tell she was very disappointed in the way the company handed, handled things. But in the end, Milan held a responsibility too. And the responsibility that Milan held was the the link was received in time in Milano. But the link didn't make it back to Milan Club New York in time for the 9 a.m. pre-sale. And I didn't have that information. And nobody at Milan told my members and my committee tell your members to stay put until you have the email because those seats will be blocked off for you. That those those seats were blocked off for us. We just didn't know that. It took me three days to figure it out. I did the thread on Twitter. I had a phone call with the organizers, the ticket guy, and all that kind of stuff. It took me that long to figure it out. And, and you wouldn't together. have figured it out if you didn't question. It, 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 to me, it just feels like it's uh, passing the ball around the buck and you're getting stuck with the short end of the stick. And this is where my committee comes in handy. This is where people like Presidente come in handy because I'm going to admit it. I'll admit it here on worldwide YouTube. He's listening. I'm I'm a very passive guy. I am not a confrontationalist. Um, And thank you to my committee. You know, they were like, no, we got to, we have to F and say something here. Um, And, and that's where we went. And I, I was just so stressed out. Like, you know, three days of work. We're like Steve said, we're working people. I'm doing all this I was in the middle of the day at you work. A job. <laughs> you know, I work in a school, folks, for the people watching who don't know. I'm a teacher. And so I'm trying in the middle of school days in between periods and off periods and telling my friend, do me a favor, come to the dean's office. And if a kid gets pulled down, just handle it because I'm on a computer trying to talk to Milano and, and 98 DMs. You know, and then I get home and I'm ignoring my family because then I spend the rest of the night trying to patch up everything. So, um, you know, I don't think people will ever will ever realize would it be in all five cities, the work that is put on by people like yourself, like Presidente, like everybody mentioned before. Sometimes you only want to hear like, but what's in it for me? What's in it for me? We give up a lot of our time, guys. Right. And yeah, look like at what Franco is, just just described. Right, you know? this is the amplified version of the daily operations of a club. Like you know, people out there think they're going to put a, a a social media page up with a geographic location and call it a club. There's more to it than that, and I think some people find out the hard way after. But um, it's the it's, right. it's the honeymoon period that needs to, to to needs to be something that everybody has to has to figure out, right? Because. Uh, this is not the honeymoon period. This is this is the trenches, right? And like you said, uh, we've seen uh, uh, Presidente 
pick up the phone and when he picks up the phone he's gonna get he's gonna get a result or he's gonna he's gonna come across uh as politely as he possibly can and get his message across so mm -hmm. uh, you know I, i tip my hat to you and you guys because it's it's hard to fight sometimes uh you know I, i've been in my own fights but i'm a little bit more uh black and white in terms of just how honest i am not at all in terms of the 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 club that i uh, that i follow i am red and black all the way but that's what i have trouble with is is the passing the buck right and and the people understanding that and understanding or not understanding that this is a is a time suck it's a, it's a complete waste of time because you're not taking it as seriously as the people who want to spend their honest earned money on getting tickets to come and watch their beloved Milan Yeah, you're going to ruin your own product. Yes, you're going to ruin your own product because there's going to be, you know, Celesti little uh, Manchester City fans who have absolutely no idea what Manchester City is besides that guy who sings uh, the, the brother of half of Oasis there, uh, who sings uh, half songs. Gallagher, music, no, yeah, Gallagher. whatever. Can't even talk anymore. And, and their club with a club like Milan in terms of like the history and stuff is like you guys you're not doing yourself any favors and i hope i hope and i was a little bit more how could i say i was a little bit more a beat when i saw la nazionale right and again except for you know la nazionale doing a little thing at, at adidas And thinking that they would only get 40 people to show up. Yeah, that was wild. Like, guys, like, I don't understand. Like, but first of all, FIGC, I, like, guys, have you, do you know the last time you came to anywhere close to America? Hmm. By the way, that, that pre sale was a shit show, too. Yeah. It was a shit show, too. It just did the, the difference was it got ironed out beforehand. Yeah. Um, but, one of the guys who spearheaded that alongside all the New York city clubs of, of the various, you know, Italian city and, and city B clubs um, like that process. because I was in it from the beginning was almost as bad. Almost. Anyway, but again, uh, sorry. Like th that's my point. Like, you know, they shot out algorithms and they shoot out all these fancy turns when it comes to when am I going to release the tickets guys? So then use this technology to figure out how many goddamn people there is in the United States of America. And there's probably more in New York than all of almost half of Italy for one game. So it's like supply and demand. It's no algorithm here, guys. It's really basic economics. You will make a shit ton of money if you just pay attention to North America a little bit more you and will give us, give us more than a week's a notice or a day notice yep. yeah but again, right and that, this, this, this was a, this was a conversation i had with presidente it was like okay you don't want to you like soccer champions tour thinks it's best to put tickets on sale a week after the announcement like if you're milan just email me and say you're not allowed to say anything but we want you to be prepared Okay. Even even yeah. four days earlier, I would have been more prepared than I was, you know, at the time of the announcement. Make me sign a non-disclosure. Make me sign it. Make me put my signature on it if you're so concerned. You can know? we not? Can we not even take the example of Italy playing Ecuador? Was announced several months before. We had the time. Steve, let's organize ourselves. Yeah, We're going to do this. Let's find a hotel. Okay, mm -hmm. it's not something that happens like that. And yes, I know New York is the center of the world. But there's people from around that will travel. There was a lot of people that traveled, right? Just give us, you know, have a bit of respect and, and, and give us the time. Because even, look, they announced it, what, March 14th? If they were going to if they want to put the tickets on sale a month after, what's the big deal? The game is in July, is it not? Right. So that was my question to the organizers. Their answer was that, you know, marketing teams and data has shown that the biggest buzz and the best ticket sales. And I, and I, and then I, you know, rebutted with, 
this is why you ruined your own product. X, Y, and Z, take that information back to your marketing team and tell them to stop just looking at numbers and listen to uh, how you just ruined, you know, a possible sale of three, 400 tickets, maybe. Right. By the way, my favorite part was the ticket guy was on that call and he said that we're outselling um, Manchester City fans. Oh, but they're all more organized than us. Yeah. Uh, he said, let's... oh, yeah, you guys are crushing them in the sales. Oh, good. Thanks. Uh, okay. Let's uh, finish off. Hey, look, look at WrestleMania. Sold out eight months ahead of time. Not a match announced. You see, you got to let people know in advance. Oh, yeah, Frankly. that's the other thing. We don't know the time of this game yet. Oh, okay. That's right. We're just buying a ticket. We'll let you know about the time. Right. Uh, a little uh, footnote here. I feel extremely, extremely bad for you because Serie A, again, way to go, Serie A. Let's put a derby on a Monday. I don't not at two forty-five at night. I'm sorry, Franco. I, I, you know what? I know you're riled up today. I'm gonna rally up even more. But uh, I know you're not gonna ruin your vacation and reschedule everything. But you were scheduled to go watch the derby. But alas, Seria says no. Lo facciamo il lunedì perché c'è la partita il giovedì. I, I'm, I feel re- you got you're getting reimbursed for those tickets or no? How does that uh, situation? So, fortunately for me personally, I'm I didn't have. A set ticket. Somebody from Milan Club Valtiberina just promised me one ticket in Curva Sud. So all I had to do was call him and say, listen, don't hold that ticket for me. Give it to another member of your club or something. Okay. And it's easy for him to get rid of. One of my other members, though, bought four tickets in Primo Rosso, and I don't even know how much he paid for them. Okay? And he is in the same situation as me, where he had travel plans for the next morning, and he got screwed. Granted, I know there's people out there probably watching this and say, you should know better. City Odd games do get announced late sometimes. City Odd games can end up on a Friday or a Monday. The only time that a derby has been played on not a Saturday or a Sunday is, A, if it was a holiday, or when Astori died and they made up the game and they had to play on a Thursday. Okay, a City Odd derby has always been on a Saturday or Sunday without any extenuating circumstances. We played four Serie A games after four Europa League games. They were all on Sunday from the last two rounds. So when they played, you know, whoever the hell, and they played, uh, you know, on a on a Sunday morning, you know, our time, it's Sunday Sunday afternoon, uh, like Windici in Italy, I was like, oh, the, the Derby's definitely going to be on a Sunday night. And so people people got screwed. Is it our own fault? There, people can argue that it's our own fault. But when do my uh, a derby on a Monday night? Thank so, God you're not a betting man, Franco. Thank God. <laughs> I kind of am, unfortunately. And I'm not very good at it. Um, but, <laughs> and I know Mark Stroop is out there laughing at me right now. Um, <laughs> so. Hey, you wanted that an algorithm. So you my, my family had travel plans for the next morning. So I'm leaving Milano the morning of the derby. Maybe it's a blessing in disguise. Maybe somebody's looking out for me. Time will tell. Time will tell. Um, <clears throat> looking forward to your possible next call. I'm going to finish off uh, before we get into the Milan Fiorentina review. Uh, I'm going to let you answer what are you expecting from that call? Me, yeah, I'm going to have one message. If anybody's listening out there, you keep on saying, We are Milan. We are AC Milan. We are Milan. Start fucking acting like it. That's my message to you, Franco. What are you expecting? Uh, what are you expecting from this call? Yeah, I mean, so um, the the only people that I haven't really sat down and spoken to is Milan. Um, I, I they did acknowledge, and we heard from them, you know, briefly through messages, or I did, I should say. And um, we have a call scheduled for next week, which is actually good because this week is insane, um, and some some prominent names will be part of that call um my my goal is just what happened what happened what happened when the the organizer for the tickets sent you a link before the 9 a.m pre-sale until 9 a.m what happened did you go on a coffee break were you stuck in a meeting what happened because you know if somebody wakes up at 4 a.m to ask it you know to tell you that there are people anxiously waiting over here even if that's not your priority at your job that day, let's say you had three other tasks that were much more important. If somebody wakes up, you make that your priority. That's I don't know. That's maybe maybe that's my 
Americanness coming out and, and work ethic, you know, of, of the way we think of things from a North American standpoint. That's that's what I would like to find out. And I think uh, other people on that call need to hear it. So um, that's the the ultimate goal is just get the answer, the answer to what happened, because we answered most of the what happens and there's only one ha one happened left. So. Well, hopefully you get some answers and somehow, some way, like, you know, you can't, they can't correct what happened, but hopefully they show some sort of like, hey, sorry about this. Here's where we're, how we're going to make it right, hopefully. Uh, you are for sure, you're going to let us know. Are you unleashing Presidente today, tomorrow, or are you going to let him off the leash, uh, Franco? Can you tell him to start the calling uh, as a Rolodex on the people <laughs> they know in Milan? He, he's uh, he's been pretty helpful over the last week. Um, you know, I, I have to every once in a while just kind of like calm down. <laughs> but you know, he's the best. Rightfully so. Rightfully so in this situation. So I'm like you, more passive than that. So uh, thanks for coming on. At least speaking about all this. But let's let's just turn it around. <clears throat> By yeah, way, and, guys. and apologies to the listeners that don't care about this whole situation. I'm sorry. No apologies. They, they can just skip. Just skip directly to uh, to uh, see how passive I am. No, no apologies. No apologies needed. <laughs> Uh, and by the way, guys, uh, Busted Tweets will be on Coast to Coast uh, this Wednesday with the guys. So let's get straight into it. Sabato alle 3.45, because time uh, time moved up on Sunday. Milan Fiorentina. Uh, not everybody uh, was feeling like, you know, very confident about the, this game, Steve, especially playing Fiorentina at home. Uh, this was the first game, I believe, after uh, that. Uh, the, what was his name? Um the past Joe Barone. Away. Joe Barone, thank you. Uh, Steve, how about you? Like, how were you feeling before the game, looking at the starting lineup, uh, uh, your expectations before uh, hitting the hitting the pitch? Yeah, so uh, it was uh, a nice atmosphere for uh, the Viola fans. I think they did a great job with their TIFO around the uh, the stadium to honor Joe Barone. I know that, uh, you know, I didn't know a lot about this man, but uh, uh, you know, just reading up and seeing what he did for you know uh, for Fiorentina, American soccer, I, I, you know, it was a nice homage to him. Um, always, in terms of momentum, I thought that Fiorentina would come up, come out a little bit more uh, energetic than they did. I think maybe they were too hyped up, and and didn't have the amount of energy to play this game because after uh, you know just a couple of spells there wasn't there wasn't too much to to Fiorentina's game uh regarding regarding the uh, you know what they put out on the field but it was a beautiful atmosphere uh, was i confident i don't know i found this a very tricky game i, yeah. I really didn't think uh it was going to end this way especially the way milan was playing and, you know, I saw uh, articles, Milan, almost perfect. I don't know how huh? people are watching soccer anymore, uh, to be very honest with you, because uh, uh, Milan was not very good. Not very good. And, you know, before I go, I let you guys talk on what you saw in the game. Uh, you know, I want to just shout out uh, Reindeers. I, I think he had a fantastic game. I think this was probably one of his best games in a Milan shirt. I think he was dynamic. I think he was linking up with everybody on the field. And, you know, I really didn't understand Pioli's substitutions, to, to be quite frank. So, uh, that Bahrain, was... Bahrain yeah. Dears is like... Uh, not that you've been critical on him, but uh, you felt that he played good from, from, Ada, from beginning to... Uh, yeah, to... and it was quality. It was not stupid negative passes backwards and you know a uh, hundred touches to get on the on the stat sheet you know we're gonna go with the analytics and all and all that stuff that, that uh, definitely that ball to Leal but Franco it's been a while I haven't said this but thank God for Magna because I felt that he stood on his head several times uh defense was not up it was not great uh, even Gabia coming on, Steve. I know you were pretty critical of him, even when he came on. But when we needed Magna to be to stand on his head, he definitely did. Uh, maybe your takeaways from this game, even Chucky starting. Uh, how did you feel about that one? Me or Steve? Oh, no, me. you, Franco. Uh, um, I thought Chukwueze did a good job. I think he's grown 
in the last month. I think he's taken a lot of heat uh, this season. Um, to Johnny Reindeers, I think sometimes um, adversely um, has not taken enough heat. I think he, for every one good play he does, he does two boneheaded ones with the, with, with the exception of this game. Um, and I, I've been extremely hard on the guy. I thought this, I agree with Steve when he says this was his best game of the season. Um, he, he cleaned up a lot of the carelessness uh, from prior games and, and did his job. The, the defense is so slow. The defense mm. is slow. I, I like Gabia. He's good at what he does, but he's just such a slow person in general. He's just slow, um, and he's limited in his athleticism, and it's it's a problem because I like him, and I think he's a very good defender. I actually would have liked to have seen him in that national team game just to give him a nod, but you know there, there are games like this one where sometimes you sit there and you worry. You worry about a guy like Dybala – in a Europa League game and what he's going to do to him. But um, I don't like the substitutions either. I thought Leao was like rolling. And I know he just got back from international break. And I, I think Portugal was like the last team to play too. I think they played a very late friendly. Didn't they send them back home after the first game, Leao? Oh, did they? I think so. I don't even think they, they just played the first one. If Guys, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they, they sent them back after the, the first game. I didn't even realize that. But... Um, but that's regardless. why Julia came to the rescue. But regardless, I mean, you know, all, all the guys came back from some type of international duty. Very, there was very few people on that field that didn't play this week. Um, you know, the guy was just on fire. You could tell he was feeling it. And let me take him off in the 61st minute. I, like, you know, everybody put their hands in their head and just said, oh, boy. And fortunately, it worked out. Um, you know, the goal that he scored was, I thought it was awesome. Obviously, the, the Terracciano did not make himself look good there. But the fact that he didn't pass the ball and he just ran past the goal is just, for me, that's an awesome goal because that, that looked balls. like, that looked like a video game glitch. It looked like a, <laughs> a, 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 a EAFC video game glitch. I could, I, I thought my TV was busted. Yeah. I was like, I needed to rewind just to check and see if there was someone else who just like got cut out of the picture because he ran in a straight line. Right and and again, you touched on the uh, on the substitution. What pissed me off is that for the first half, you know, Leal was Leal looked very disinterested, looked like uh, you know he was smiling, uh, missed passes, uh, the wrong play. Uh, you know, the again, guys, we cannot negate the fact that he is a superior athlete. You know, super fast. But he has the soccer IQ of a peanut. <laughs> Come on, Steve. <laughs> he does, guys. And again, it's it's simple things, right? It's Chucky standing on the box waiting to tap in a ball that has to just be crossed. It's, it's funny. It's funny that you mentioned it because I'm just going to put his question uh, from Vince Mancini. Goes, my question is not a dig at layout, more so open question to get your opinion. With his goal, which was beautiful to say the least, do you think he should have passed to Chucky for the super easy tap in, or do we think he, t- he uh, or do you, or do what he did and take it home? Now, now for me, I'm happy he showed the confidence in himself to easily get around the keep and put it away. Exactly what he needs to do. The reason I ask is if I'm if he misses the chances with Chuka right there, man would have been a media hell storm upon him. Thank you, for some, yeah. He's right. You know, it's it's. Where do you but stand? I don't, I don't, <clears throat> Maybe that's Frank, not that, that's not that's not the play, right? You, you you have to take the play for what the play is. The play where he should have made the pass was in the first half when he beats someone with speed, yeah. Yeah. and instead of shooting from an almost impossible angle where one out of ten is going to go short side on the keeper who's not waiting for it, uh, he has Chucky waiting in the six yard box on his goal, guys. We can't have Leal being passing just to be nice and just to get and to be afraid of what the media is going to say if he misses. We need him to take that chance every single time he has it and just and just score, right? So uh, my opinion is just go and you and you just score. The thing is that I need to see Leal, and if I need to see Leal, like as if I'm invested in it, Milan needs to see Leal become more of an intelligent player in the final third where, you know, we've caught on now. The people have known. They're defending him almost 
they they want him to cut to the right and try to pick out that top to pick out that far corner on the keeper. They know that he wants to do that, and now it's just getting harder for him. Okay, he's gonna take it. He's gonna take it in the left. He's gonna go with speed. There's a better chance he loses it there, and he's gonna make the wrong play, and that's what happens. He just makes the wrong play. Franco, where do you stand on that play, or do you agree with Steve? Uh... Well, yeah, for the the play that Steve was talking about, easily. I mean, that's that's the more sound decision, and it, and it could lead to a better chance. Let's say we score or not, it doesn't matter. It leads to a better chance. Um, the one that Vince was talking about, just the, on the goal itself, to answer his question, I would prefer him to hold on to the ball there, okay, because it shows that you have the balls to be the top player. Like I'm the man on the field, I'm the man. I'm gonna have the balls to to take this and literally run it into the goal, you know, without making the play. Because then if he passes it and then Chukwueze shanks it, then what? And then we're here talking about how we tied one one and maybe he should have held on to the ball and taken it himself instead of passing it to Chukwueze. So you know, it's fifty fifty that way. Obviously, it worked out. But if you want to be the man, woo woo, exactly. You know, so but interesting question nonetheless. But uh, I think I'm uh, I'm with you on this. Like, look, I'm the man on this pitch. I'm gonna score. Uh, you know, the play to to be made. But like what Steve was saying, were those times that he had to pass, and he's trying too hard to make that impossible goal. He does have you know a superior athlete. I know he's got the skills, but uh, let's see what he gives us in the last. Uh, what is it, guys? Now eight games left. Nine. Yeah, eight. Eight games left. Um, if we had to. Pick a top and a flop, Steve Calabria for flop. Hasn't been good. Hasn't been good. It's been a while. I haven't seen Calabria play uh, play to what we've seen him capable of doing. I'm gonna have to go with with Calabria on this one. How about you for a flop? Uh, Chao was not good again. Uh, neither was Benacer, to be honest, with you. Invisible this game, Ben. I've seen Ben Asser take a little dip in form. Uh, I assume it has to do with uh, the injury he picked up. Uh, he did leave uh, the Algerian national team early, so I don't know if he's injured, but I didn't seem to me that uh, Benny uh, looked as confident as, as he did. Again, I'm just gonna. I just can't figure out Chow right now. I think he's someone. I, I, I respect Pioli putting him in there uh, because he needs to get his confidence back. But he did not look very confident. Uh, top marks to uh, Ryan Deers and uh, Mike Magna and Chucky as well. You know, good for him. He, I've been. We, we've been all been very critical of Chucky. I think he was really good. He linked up well with a lot of people on on the pitch, and it was nice to see. Uh, but you know. Pulsic is the starting right wing, so you got to find. We got to find another way to to slot him in there to get him more minutes. Um, flop for you, Franco. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a pick 'em. Either Davide Calabria or, or Malik Chow. Unfortunately, um, Davide Calabria is not a top level, like top four Serie A team yearly Champions League team starter. With all due respect to him, with as much as he's done for this shirt, you know, taking on the armband and all that kind of stuff, he's just not. He's just not. Maybe he's not, I don't know, like maybe people argue he's not even a Serie A player. I wouldn't even, go, I wouldn't go that far because the quality in Serie A has gone down, but it, he's hard to watch. He's hard to watch. And when his confidence is down, he's just brutal. He's just brutal. So, uh, Mali Chow, like Steve said, and, and like you said, you know, respect to be only to try to get him in there, but you know, confidence is shot. Top is definitely uh, either Tijani or Mike Magnan. I would say Mike Magnan just because we've been criticizing him so much for not making the saves that he's supposed to make, and he yeah. made some really big ones that beyond the ones that he's supposed to make. So maybe give it to him. Uh, and just a, a honorable mention to Florenzi, who just with his age and everything else and his you know, limitations because of his age and what he does now plays as good as he can consistently. You know, he almost scored too. He had that that shot that was really nice. If yeah. it was a little more to the left, it was in. Lolly. Uh, and then he got in a fan's face for being a jerk off. So <laughs> gotta love you gotta love Florenzi. You gotta love Florenzi. And he had a fantastic post match interview. Yes. I don't like know what channel he was on. 
it, it was, on was Zone. fantastic. No, it was on Sky. It was on Sky. It was on Sky. Was on Sky. Yeah. And uh, you know, before we get into uh, Serie A, Steve, leave it to uh, Milan. Uh, Milan playing a game on good old Friday, Friday 9 a.m. here in uh, North America. Uh, who are we facing again? We're facing Lecce, I believe. On uh, no, it's on a Saturday, Saturday game. Saturday morning. It's Saturday morning. I thought it was Friday. Saturday morning, 9 a.m. <clears throat> I thought it was on the sixth. So I'm all screwed up here. I thought it was on Friday. Anyways, Saturday 9 a.m. Never mind. So that's a pretty stupid comment. I don't know how to read a. Uh, I don't know how to read a, a, a calendar. Good for you, Vinny. Uh, on that note, uh, let's uh, head over. <laughs> it, it makes it even worse because it's Saturday at 12 o'clock. No, it's 9. Here it says 12. Milan Lecce, 9 a.m. Oh, Saturday the 6th. I should have said, I should instead of looking at the date, I should have just saw Saturday. Here it says 12. Me, it says nine. We're gonna go with nine o'clock, people. We're gonna go with nine a.m. On that note, let's go take a look at some uh, Serie A results. This segment has been brought to you by Football.tv, your home for all things Serie A and EPL here in Canada. And uh, it's been a while; he hasn't heard it, but uh, this is for. Well. Uh, oh, I have it on loop. I will uh, let you uh, take this one. Uh, Atalanta, Napoli in Naples. <sighs> Savamala, Napoli, as they would say here in uh, Montreal. But uh, I, I was, I, I was expecting not to say Napoli win, or uh, I wasn't expecting this kind of result. But <sighs> is there anything salvageable for, from this season? Or were you happy to see Atalanta score three uh, three goals like that? Me, Steve, or Franco, or one? So, I, you know, I don't really like Atalanta. Um, I like some of their players personally, but you know, for Fanta reasons and just in, in general. But just to see Napoli continue to have the worst title defense ever after saying that we had the worst title defense ever is just enjoyable. And and that's where I go. What's salvageable from Napoli season? Their jerseys, and that's it. <laughs> the jerseys. Steve, did you enjoy uh, this game? It's a little quiet over there. I know you had your rant on Napoli fans, but uh, other than our, our waiter at the Napolitan restaurant, they're wearing all Napoli Maradona, but he's speaking perfect Spanish. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, uh, this is uh, this is just cause, and they deserve it. You know. We heard a lot. We heard a lot of chappering. We heard a lot of bickering. We heard a lot of quacking from the Napoli fans. And uh, now you can't, you cannot, you cannot Talk go about, <laughs> no, you can't, you can't go about squawking your mouth if you, if you watch soccer once every 20 years, just to see when you, when, when your team's going to win a Scudetto, right? So, you have to understand how to go through the bad to deal with the good, right? And be humble and understand that the, the game is like that and the league is a special league in its own and things can change in in, in, in lightning fast pace, which is not something that Serie A in general does very fast. And they don't do anything very fast, let alone send, you know, uh, Milan Club New York, the uh, pre-sale codes. So, uh, Napoli, that's what it is, brothers. That's what it is for all the Napoli time. Come on, stop it. <laughs> one to one, Genoa Frosinone, both of them taking home at the point. Uh, Torino won nothing over Monza, but Monza has done their job this season. We'll stay up in Serie A. Torino, maybe five, six weeks ago, was not looking very good, but we'll take a look at the tables after securing yeah. a much a much needed win there, Franco. No for Torino. Sanabris have a good season, and and they're right behind like Napoli now. They're in that like nine spot, yeah. So they're right there. So good for them. You know, the, their, fa their fans deserve it too. They they have you know loyal fans that see really hard things. Oh, this next game. And then we take it to uh, Lazio Juve, Steve. And uh, even though there wasn't many of uh, Squilly Tromb on this one, and they left it late, left it late. 
People were expecting, Steve, a Allegri masterclass, maybe a 93rd minute. But what happened? Strasbourg, Steve, uh, he was he was very happy. Uh, but uh, what are your takeaways from, from this game? So we had to check on Steve in New Hampshire to make sure that he didn't run through a wall or something. But uh, he <laughs> must have had like 14 Red Bulls after this one uh, because he needed it. Because this was a shit game. It was an absolute snooze fest. Both teams, yeah, both teams were just guys. Lazio, yeah, but they didn't have Vlaovic, Steve. They're Maybe gonna they come out to the three points. Lazio, they're gonna be happy. We have the kid who who, who does the live watches here for the Laziale at Sambuca Pity Pops. Shout out to those guys. One of the best sandwiches, Kumbara Frango. When you come, we're gonna give you a nice focaccia sandwich at Sambuca I'm write Pity this Pops. One down now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh you know shout out because you know it's it's again someone doing content for said yeah but you could have slept for 92 minutes that's this correct game. 92 it's minutes of this game it was absolutely what we did not want other casual fans no matter where you are watching for said yeah it still has a bit of appeal, like, like you know, Lazio, Juve. But no, you do not want to have people, the eyes of the world, uh, on this game because it was definitely a snooze fest. Uh, Franco, you're, I'm, a, I'm seeing you're agreeing with Steve on this one. This was one of the worst games in Serie A history. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> so we, we got we got your comments on that one. So and uh, Juve uh, looking like, uh, hey, you know what? That uh, that sh- that uh, ship has sailed. You did have a chance, but it's just been defeat after defeat, and not. It was last Sunday one, guys. It's been over a month, no? I think I so. No idea. Uh, no anyways, idea. but again, before you flip over the yes, Milan, sir. the so it's it's funny that Sunny put them like that, and I don't know if that's the official order, but you know what yeah, we this- saw. Lazio Juve is what we don't want the casual fan to see. And what we saw Fiorentina Milan is what we want the casual fan to see. Uh because it was up and down, you know, not the best, not beautiful for three long. goals in three minutes. But no, it but was, it was it was entertaining it, for it was a neutral. Exactly. Even the, even the goal this first half was entertaining yes. for a neutral. So yes. Juve is winless in their last four. Their last win was uh, over Frosinone 3-2 by a miracle on Sunday, February Yes, 25th. yes, I remember that. I remember that. Um, taking it over to Bologna. It just looks like uh, they're doing For it. For Saputo you know? Cheese! Saputo Cheese, three goals. Uh, you know, I'm going to throw this to Frank. Always, I would like to ask Stevie this one all the time, but... Is this Bologna for real? Or is it because the Lazio and the Romas and the Napoli Serie A just kind of not performing this year? Yes and yes. <laughs> okay, but no, they play they play a fun brand of soccer. They're very um, they're very they're very confident in themselves. Their their coach got them to play a confident way. They play the most beautiful b- brand of soccer. I don't think so, but they do what it takes to get the job done. I think Josh Xerxes is awesome um, in general. Not like talking about today's game or anything, but just in general. Uh, Orsolini is a good soldier. You know, he fits perfectly in that system. And today he showed it again. He scored again today. I think he scored his 50th Serie A goal. You know, it's, that's nothing to, you know, sneeze at. That's that's pretty good. And Salsi Jamaica got himself a goal today, too. So Both great goals. Uh, but even the team that they built, like, you know, just to have a guy like Froiler in there who was like, you know, an Atalanta mainstay. And he went in there and, and you know... Um, took on you know like a veteran role with them like the they have a good team and they and they should they have a lot of positives yeah are yeah, they well, are they gonna are they gonna be a good representative for Serie A in Champions League mm-hmm. I don't know I don't know about that, 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 that un applauso per Bologna un applauso un applauso un applauso per Bologna what say you there, Steve, about Bologna? Reminiscence of uh, Udine making Udine is exactly into the Champions League, but I hope that they, you know, if they do make it, they they try to 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 reinforce their team and 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 again, it's going to be amazing for their fans. You know, uh, we have a hometown attachment to this uh, to this Bologna because you know Sapporo, Montrealer does own it, uh, so it would be cool to see uh, what they do. Uh, the other scores, Caleri, Venora, Una Unos, another stalemate. Uh, Sassuolo. Oh, yeah. Caleri, Caleri should have won that game. Caleri, 
they were awesome in the second half. They, they they just couldn't put it away. And they just need those points. You know, if you're looking at at this, right? You have the 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 Sassuolo's uh, Frozen Iron Police thing at those points there. What a race this is going to be. What a race. And Cality there at 27. Um, again, Verona, but this was written in the star. No, no, two, two relegation team. They needed one of these teams, definitely needed the three points, but it's going to go down to the wire, gentlemen. Definitely going to go down to the wire. One team that didn't need to really win, guys, and looking at their score was Sassuolo. And I believe Sassuolo uh, scored first in this game and won one. Steve, do you think they're going to go down Sassuolo? Yeah, there's no. Uh, the, the, it's sad, but it's not the type of team that you would like to see it go down just because they have their own stadium and they have been doing so very well, you know, in past years. But it's just a, it's just a staple of what Serie A is at, you know, Sassuolo and you know other teams coming up that have a better project, you know, make some moves. The the the, the there's a fine line between. Uh, promotion and relegation when it comes to those uh, smaller teams. Yeah. Uh, you know, Defrello scoring and uh, Tove on the other side. We'll see definitely last eight games. And another, uh, I I wish we get this uh, Roma guys in the Europa League, but another snooze fest of a game, uh, even with Lukaku up there. Has Lukaku been a flop at Roma this year, Franco? Yeah, uh, easily. You know, just uh, if it wasn't for Dybala, they would be. You know, they would have nine less points, this team. Um, honestly, second half, not much of a snooze fest. I, I, you know what I wrote in my notes for this game? Lecce WTF, because I've never seen a team miss so many chances the way Lecce did in this second half. It makes me feel a little bit better going into the Europa League matchup because if there's any defense worse than Milan's, it's an almost. Uh, so we're going to find out which, which defense is worse. 27 goal attempts with six on target. 10 goal attempts by Roma with three on target. Holy shit, Lecce. Lecce wants to get those, uh, Lecce wants to get those points and uh, them uh, still at 28, not safe. But uh, uh, these are the kind of teams you got to worry about, Steve, right? We keep on saying week after week uh, the, in the next eight, uh, in the next eight, uh, eight weeks. And guess who's facing them this Saturday at 9 a.m.? Right. So, Steve, uh, in, uh, Roma play. I know it's a different beast, but uh, uh, not surprised by this result. You, you were expecting Roma to do something today, or I think Roma dropped uh, some crucial points today. That's really well put. And uh, if anybody was expecting Inter to drop points at home against Empoli, guys, it was not going to happen. Uh, two nothing Inter uh, win. So, uh, looking uh, to uh, back to uh, their uh, seventy nine points. Uh, UVF fifty nine. Let, let me go with this one. Steve, anybody in the top seven, do you think anybody's moving? Like, like you you think Juve would drop? I think they... Boulogne is not going to take third spot. Oh, anything's possible. Juve has been playing very crap. From the beginning of the year, I said their brand of football is shit. And uh, Bologna's brand of football is exciting. Uh, I would not be surprised if Bologna leapfrogs uh, Juventus. Uh, but I don't think that, you know, especially after dropping points like today, uh, Roma needed those two extra points. Uh, I don't see uh, Roma jumping in there, right? Uh, the Lazio, unfortunately, it's, 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 it might be a little bit too late. And Atalanta is a bit strange. Vinny Singh has a hunch Atalanta makes it to the top four. Uh, you, Franco? I, th I think Bologna does pass Juventus. I, th I, I think they're determined to do it. I think Juve is at an all-time, you know, just uh, low confidence, you know. Uh, Roma, I think, is just too worried about Europa League. I think once, you know, Roma in competitions like that, are they're all in and that's why i'm still worried about that matchup i i think between them and their fans that they're all in on europa league and they don't even care where they finish in city i know they're fighting for that you know fourth fifth spot and they're going to concentrate on that but i think they're going to go balls to the wall in europa league unfortunately so it's going to be an entertaining eight remaining games and yeah like yourself like stevie p and i and some level level-headed fans and we're not taking roma lightly uh, you can say it's a it's an easy draw. What a great draw we got! There's no such thing as an easy draw. We've seen uh, 
we've we we called we've called Lazio Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde in the past. These kind of leagues, it's the same thing. We don't know what kind of room we're going to get in the Europa League, but uh, what is it? Not uh, next Thursday, correct, guys? Uh, are we playing in England uh, first? Or we're doing um, on a home uh, first, and then the second leg in Rome. In Rome, and uh, that, uh, ladies and gents, was your segment brought to you by Football TV, your home for all things Serie A uh, and the EPL here in Canada. Um, looking at our Fanta Calcio, Chicken Carm still there, and I believe he's from New York, Franco. Chicken Carm, he's, he's it's there, it's there. Is that a 25, 25 point lead? Uh, P- Peter Chow, president, is up there. Zaid, um, uh, how, how are you doing in your Fanta Calcio, Frank? Um, horrendous this year, forget it. I don't really want to talk about it. Immobile is my main forward. That's all you need to know. And Chiesa was my main midfielder. That's all you need to know. Okay. We don't need to know anything uh, after that. Uh, Steve, um, you... Uh, no, you can harm good people, by the way. Just big shout out to him. And he's a big fan of the show, so... Yes, he did. Uh, he met Fabio a couple weeks ago. And uh, salute, tanta salute to Chicken Carm. Steve, you up and down. Come about Fanta Calcio. I hate Fanta Calcio. I suck it. <laughs> <laughs> that segment was brought to you by Fanta Calcio City of Fantasy. Always, uh, some people have fun, some people suck at it, but it's always all in good fun. Um, by the way, um, uh, Franco Mark wanted to let you know on uh, on Patreon that if if he lasts, if 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 it lasts longer than the length of this podcast, if he lasts longer than who do I consult? He's like hint hint. I don't know. He's he's like he's expecting an hour and a half. Is he gonna last longer than an hour and a half? I leave it to you, Mark. I don't know what the hell's going on in his head. Uh, Fabio asking, guys, we have to rank the summer signings. Your top three and why? Pulisic, RLC, Musa, Jovic, Okafor, Chuck, Reindeers, and the Sportiello. Franco, you take it. Top three. Uh, <laughs> Both this cheek. Before Pulisic? Yes. Okay. Pulisic, 1B. Yeah. 1B. And uh, Ring? I don't know. I, I guess I guess reindeers. I guess I don't. Know. I I just up until Saturday, I I would I had enough of the guy, but um, yeah, I would guess. You... But I, I I don't know. I have a I have a soft spot for my pal Noah. Okay, Oka for yeah, that's a good uh, good three. Steve, in order. How about you? Pulisic, Lofts, Cheek, Oka for. Okay. Um. I think I got the top two like you guys. Uh, I will go because of his um, because of his presence in the midfield, Loftus Cheeks, Pulisic, and uh, you know what? For me, <sighs> Reindeers because of the amount of minutes he's played and the way he's adapted and right, like that's why I never it. taken you know for so I'm gonna go with those ones. Uh, Guys, it is what it is. No uh, busted tweets. We're going to leave that up to the boys on Coast to Coast. Franco, again, thank you so much for taking the time to describing what went on, uh, the stress that you were put under, uh, sharing the story with everybody, and hopefully um, this call goes well for you. I'm sure you're going to be letting us know. And um, we need to come down to uh, New York a bit more often, but with this exchange... You gotta come up to us. You gotta come up to us. Well, oh, this guy Frank Chichi calculated everything. He knows what everything in the U.S. Cal- cost in, in in Canadian. I was opening up the app. My this beer just cost me twenty eight dollars Canadian. That's brutal. Really, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was calculating everything, but uh, no, it's it's not that bad of a drive. It was really nice to uh, come down. But uh, I believe it's you had guys, called. Huh? I believe you did call me a lucky charm when I came down to watch Milan Napoli. We schlacked them for nothing, and we were we were on a. Uh, on a bad streak but uh, again thank you for coming on giving up your time and sharing this the story i know president is just waiting he's a, he, he's in the trenches he's just waiting for you to give him the go because out of the five families you're the couple in new york uh, it runs everything you know mark is a soldier mark in boston he's a soldier uh, fante what is he stvp in the five families who conciliere he's a conciliere yeah, exactly <laughs> <laughs> uh, but again, uh, thanks. Any closing words before everybody go? Anybody that um, from Milan Club New York, you guys are going to get together <laughs> this uh, this Saturday? Yeah, it's Saturday morning, um, Football Factory. It's actually 
a good time for me personally because then I could get back to the family at a normal hour and still spend Saturday with them. So I, I actually like the morning ones. It works out for me personally. Um, just a big shout out to you guys. Thanks for having me on. It's always a pleasure. A part of la familia. Stevie P, closing words, nothing. How's this class going? You're still going to be studying. We're going to get you some replacements on the next couple of Mondays. Today, uh, Jornata la uh, Pasquetta, Laura, you know. Yeah, today was Pasquetta, guys. I apologize there. I got I to gotta take some exams. Uh, but, yeah, uh, busy with uh, exam work, busy with uh, local soccer. So, you know, guys, uh, local soccer, if you're here in uh, the East End, uh, you know, we uh, registration is open for recreational to, to all the little Pulicinis that want to play soccer. It's time to register. You want to play uh, competition, Development Plus, that's open up too. We're going to have summer camps this summer. We're going to have soccer schools on Sunday and together in cooperation, the summer camp and the soccer schools with RP9. Our friend Rocco Placentino will be lending a hand which is great for the community, bringing back someone from RDP to run and help us uh, with our summer camps and the soccer schools here in RDP. Uh, besides that, uh, that's it. I want to see Milan beat Roma in the uh, uh, UEFA Euro, whatever how you want to call it, Cup. I, I want them to bring it back to UEFA Cup because I just don't like this Euro League. It just sounds weird. But uh, besides that, guys, Forza Milan. That's what I. That's what I you want. Know, you know, talk about commitment, this guys. Place. This guy, we're in the shop. We're in the parking lot of the shopping at the, what was it called, Steve? Uh, uh, the shopping mall where we're going. And this guy's taking a call. Yes, there's gonna be over for for the local soccer. Somebody's gonna be over there. They could go sign up. This is the dedication uh, that the people like you, people like Stevie P, your own time, even while on vacation. Guys, on that note, stay tuned. Hit that subscribe button, coast to coast this week. I thought the game was on Friday. No, it's on Saturday. I'm, I'm working, but I'll be, be able to host a, um, a pregame. On that note, ovunque, as sempre. Forza Milan! Forza Milan, guys.